Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Brethren, you are welcome to this Sunday school class. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Almighty God, everlasting Father, we thank you. The omnipotent God, omniscient God, we exalt your name for this day, for this time, for this hour, Lord, for this moment, Lord. Let your name alone be glorified, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit ourselves into your hands, Lord, this day, God, that day you will breathe on us freshness of your ministry in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, at the end of this class, Lord, your name alone be glorified and the blessing, Lord God, will be released unto us. For in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, we want to look at the topic, lasting legacy. Lasting legacy. And our Bible passage shall be taken from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 35. Verse 2 to 11. Jeremiah 35, 2 to 11. I read, Go unto the house of the Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give, the, give them wine to drink. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Abazimah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house, of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Egadaliah, a man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Maseah, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I said before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, pots full of wine and cups. And I said unto them, Drink ye wine. But they said, we will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons forever. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any, but all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed the voice of Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he hath charged us to drink no wine all our days. We, ourselves, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyard, nor field, nor seed. But we have dwelt in tent and have obeyed and done according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But it came to pass, when Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up into the land, that we said, Come, and let us go to Jerusalem, for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. We are looking at lasting legacy. And our memory verse is taken from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 which says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, as it is written in the book of Proverbs 13, verse 22. Legacy. Lasting legacy. What is legacy, brethren? A legacy is defined as what we leave behind to family, friends, colleagues, neighbors, communities. This includes material possessions, our history, belief system, and values, if adopted, businesses, practices, name, reputation, and teaching, if useful. It could also be defined as money or property bequeathed to another by will or something handed down from an ancestor or a predecessor or from the past. Legacies are rare and special gifts from one person to another, from one generation to the next. As Christians, we should seek to leave a lasting legacy of godliness for those who come behind us. The fact is, most of what we do will not last. Things we cherish will ultimately perish with the using unless we think seriously about the kind of legacy we are developing. It is likely we leave nothing worth inheriting. I pray the Lord 
will help us to leave a lasting legacy behind for the people coming after us in the name of Jesus. We are talking of what we leave. For example, we are, when we are talking about legacy, we are talking about names, talking about our reputations, talking about what it is not about what we are, uh, how we place ourselves now. We become a celebrity. No, that's not what we are saying. But that's very tangible thing. That yes, after we have left this world, after we have left this side of the world, that the people that are coming, that people that are looking up onto us, they have something to, to follow. That is why we are being told, each time we want to leave the house, you'll be told, remember the son or the daughter of whom you are. That means to say, everybody has something to protect. So that name, that name, what kind of name are we leaving behind? Name has opened doors for people and same name has shut the door against some people. For example, there was a story I had like that. While this man was a lecturer, he misused the opportunity, the privileges he had, was just misbehaving to the extent that one of the students that he sent packing from graduating Eventually, that guy, God helped him in life, he made it to the extent that this lecturer now has a child that needs to apply for job in his place of work. And this man happens to be one of the persons that needs to preside over the interview. The moment the name was cited, and he just separated the, the paper of this fellow. And after the interview, he was called that, come, this is the story. This is your letter of employment. But in his presence, he tore it into pieces. Now go and tell your father. Though the father was alive as at that time. What am I trying to say? The guy went back home. Sad. Dad, what have you done? They said, I need, you, you need to come to so, so, so and so place. Praise the Lord. We have some people like that, just at the mention of the name. They say, oh, are you a daughter or a son or so, so, so person? By the mentioning of that name, hundreds of people are ready. They are willing to do what? To give a happy hand. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus so that we will not soil our hands, we will not soil our names why we are living in the name of Jesus, how to live lasting legacy. That was when I look at it, there are some things that we do that we get ourselves involved. After we leave this world, after we leave this stage of life, can we pass these things down to our children? Can we pass it down to the next generation? That was when I look, I keep telling people, when you see something, say, oh, Raka Dede, Twali, this and that, I look at it. Is this what you are going to pass down to your children? Because the time will come that you will not be able to do all manner of things like that. Will your children be able to eat from it? With the kind of life that we are living, are we not causing pains, causing agony for people? And will, will this not cause pain for our children? How to leave a lasting legacy. Brethren, what we leave behind for family, friends, colleagues, neighbors, and communities. It could be defined as money or properties or material possession, history, belief system, values, names, reputation, and some, several other ones bequeathed to another by will or instructions. There are people that they have so much amassed wealth. To the extent that the, even the third generation after them will not know what we call poverty. And meanwhile, we have some people, what they do is that it's only now, they use today now to spoil the future for themselves, and not for themselves alone, but for the people, for the oncoming generation. They are rare and special gifts from one person to another, from generation to generation. 
Most of the things we do will ultimately perish with the using and passage of time. Therefore, we should seriously consider and think of what legacy we are leaving behind. After we must have left, what are they going to say about us? What are they? By the time you leave this parish you are, what will men say of you? By the time you leave the community you are, what will men say of you? I pray it shall be of good reports in the name of Jesus. How do we leave a lasting legacy, brethren? One, we need to set up example of character traits that our children should develop. We need to be consistent with rules and consequences. We need to teach our children values. We shouldn't just leave our children to dress when they get to school. We leave them at, at, just at the, mercy, at the mercy of the teachers. They are at the mercy of people out there. That is why you see most of youth of nowadays, they learn from outside. There is another that said a child that has no parents will learn when a child that has family is being what? Is being corrected. You learn from them. Praise the Lord. The Lord will help us to live a lasting legacy in the name of Jesus. Make sure your own choice reflects the teaching of Jesus and the legacy you hope to create in the book of Job, chapter 36, verse 10. Job 36, 10, which says, He opened also their ear to discipline and commanded that they return from iniquity. To live a good legacy, we must try to live, we must discipline our children. It's not that we should overpamper them. Where correction is needed, we need to. Where they need spanking, we need to give it to them. And we need to build our life and those whom we influence upon eternal word of God. We need to influence people's life with the word of God. Let's see the book of Proverbs chapter 30, Proverbs 30, 3 to 5. It says, I neither learn wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy, who has ascended up into heaven or descended, who had gathered the wind in his priest, who had bound the waters in the garment, who had established all the ends of the earth. What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. And verse 5 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. So that is why part of the legacy we need to teach, ourselves, teach our children as we are teaching ourselves, teach our children, teach the people under our influence the word of God, what the scripture says. Not what the internet says. Not what the community says. What is the word of God saying per time? And we have to stand by the word. It's not that we speak the word and we live another life. We, live, we should not live a double standard life. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. We have to encourage and inspire others. Encourage the people that are following us, the people that we are leading, we need to encourage them, we need to inspire them by the help of the Holy Spirit. We need to win souls to the Lord. It's part of it. I was just checking my phone and I saw a small boy now holding a, a microphone. What he saw his father doing, the boy was doing it also. He just had, I think it was a, he had an object. And he gathered two younger ones, calling the name of Jesus, give your life to Christ, do this, do that, and calling the fire. I was just looking at it. I said, wow, this boy must have learned this from somebody. I believe that he must have come from a Christian home. That is what he sees every day. Praise the Lord. So, winning souls, 
speaking about the word of God, trying to tell others about Christ Jesus. Talking the lives of those younger, even much younger than you, with wisdom, the years have given you. You need to target some young people and do it intentionally. That yes, I want to pour myself into this one. Like Timothy did. I pour to Timothy. Praise the living Jesus. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. In the book of Hebrews 13, Hebrews 13, verse 16, and it says, But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. For us to be remembered, for us to be here that, oh, after we have gone, these are the things we will be remembered for. Then maintaining godly character and conduct is very key. Maintaining a godly character and conduct. That one could be seen in the book of Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, verse 1. I want us to read that one. It says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor than silver and gold. We are talking about good name here now. A good name. You have some people, they have nothing to lose. That is why you see people, they misbehave, misbehave out there. There are some children, they know that, no, I cannot behave like this. I cannot talk like this. I cannot move with the kind of these people. Why? Because I have a home. Why? Because I have a name. I pray that our name and our family name will not be soiled through us in the name of Jesus. That we shall lift the name of our family up in the name of Jesus. Then we need to give our time and be available to these ones that are coming, that are looking up unto us. We need to give our time. If you don't give time, there is no way we'll be able to impart them. There is no way we'll be able to pass down those legacy. It's just like a man that we're about to pass on to the other side. And the other time, they, they will call the children, come, I have this. I will, so after my death, you, you will take over this property, you will take that property there, you will do this, you will do that. Why? Because there is time. And that is why coming together, relating together, communication, good communication. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we are talking about lasting legacy. The Lord will help us to live a lasting legacy in the name of Jesus. We are talking about lasting legacy, brethren. What do we benefit? What do we stand to gain? So benefits and characteristics of a godly legacy. We just mentioned a few or some of them. Some of the benefits. One, it impacts the next generation. The legacy that we leave behind, it will impact those that are coming. And great vision and passion not to die off. Because when you have a vision and you pursue this vision and you have some people that are following after you, definitely wherever you stop, they will carry on. Thank God for the redeemed Christian Church of God. Where our Father and the Lord, uh, Reverend Josiah Akida Yomi, stopped, that is where our Father and the Lord, the General Obasia, Pastor Yi Adibui, continues because they are leaving a godly legacy behind. And which I believe, and I know by the special grace of God, after that the Jew must have left, gone to be with the Lord, whosoever that is coming into his shoe, definitely will continue in the name of Jesus. It is a way of providing for the next generation. There is a, another, is by developing next generation of leaders. Having a legacy will make you a better leader. If you don't have anything, then you die for nothing. 
we must have something as think that yes, this is what I'm pursuing. You cannot just like I was telling someone, your life is not not is not your own life. So that is why you cannot just live your life anyhow. That is why we must live our life and pattern it according to the will and the plan and the purpose of God for our lives. You have a legacy to leave behind. Then you watch the way you live, you watch the way you talk, you watch the way you behave, the way you react. That is why you cannot compare yourself with another fellow. Because there is something unique in you. There is something in you that somebody also is looking up to. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Having a legacy will make you a better leader. It will exert a positive impact on the way you plan and lead and how you communicate and the values you hold. If you look at the value system of people out there, it has deteriorated to zero level. That is why you see some people when they are driving or when they do some things on the road, they will tell you they have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose. Anything can happen. Whether you are hurt or not, they care not. But you that have something to protect, definitely you behave yourself. Definitely you keep calm while they are agitating. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The characteristic of a godly legacy include a positive legacy. A positive legacy must be what? Must be developed. It does not just happen. It doesn't happen. So we have to work at it that yes, this is what I am pursuing. This is what I want to achieve. This is my target. And what one of the characteristics again is that it must be worth inheriting. For example, now somebody that wakes up in the morning, oh, that wise money, wise money, they go to the bus stop. Each time I see them, early in the morning, before seven o'clock, you have seen most of them sweating it out, running after bosses, running after, just want to collect money. Hey, oh, that where's money, where's money, where is this, where is that? And now look at it. Have these people ever thought of it that? The time is coming. They will not have the strength. They will not have the ability to do all these things again. Now how are they going to raise their children? And most of them, you see them, they have more than one, two, three wives at home. How are they going to take care of these children? I pray that our children will not be vagabonds in, on the street in the name of Jesus. Lasting legacy. It must work in everything. It must not just end with you. It must not die with you. The talent, the gift of the, the Lord in you have to impact the incoming generation. Legacy is not about celebrating your life or achievements, but maximizing the influence you can have in the lives of others so that you know your work for God is not in vain as it is written in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 which says, Therefore my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So we must be steadfast, immovable, abounding in the work of the Lord. You know, I see we are pouring ourselves into others. We know that these things are not in vain. Legacy is not about titles or positions. These will not make the leader, but credibility, your influence, positive role modeling, passion and integrity. I was in a place today, to be precise, I just had that discussion that even in church that, yes, that guy has collected money for a drum set. 
from the pastor. And this other person may gain also, ah, okay, this drunkard has to be returned. And the fellow that was called upon to intervene, he has been given 10,000 and he pocketed the money. Just, oh, I look at it. Integrity. 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 How much can we depend on you? How much can we rely on you as a person? Can anybody trust you for anything? When you say A, we need to watch closely that it is not A, it is A other way around. When you say it is white, you need to shine your eye to know that it is not off white. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So legacy is about others. Buy into our beliefs and values and following them when we are not around. Can, we, can you see that now? When we are not around. For example, I will give an example of my one of my children at home. Each time I'm not there, probably they need my attention and some other stuff. And this young boy will say, this is the way my father does it. And the boy will do it and they will achieve results. So a times he will just challenge the mom, mom, calm down, just don't worry. The mother will be afraid that, oh, don't be, don't, don't, he will do it. Praise the Lord. Because he has seen the father doing it. He has seen the, somebody that is falling, doing it, getting results. And he also has imbibed the action, the act. Praise the Lord. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Because what we leave behind has to worth. Pass on the best of yourself to those you lead. Set an example. Brethren, are you an HOD of a department? You are a leader of a house fellowship? You are leading some people? Whatever capacity you are, you have to do what? Pass on the best. Don't just do it wishy-washy. Don't just do it anyhow. Because today, you have the privilege. I remember those days when we were on campus. I keep telling friends, I said, well, by the special grace of God, I will do everything I can do because this is the time that I have. If I leave the office and come back tomorrow, I will become a nuisance because I may no longer be what? Relevant. So as, as, as at the time that I am relevant, let me do, give my best. Brethren, are you giving your best? The little assignment committed it to your hands. Are you giving your best? Are you not comparing yourself? Are you not saying, oh, complaining? Why should this small one be given to me and the other one? The small one that has been committed it to your hands. How faithful are you in it? The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, in summary, leave a godly legacy for your children. Either spiritual children or your biological children. We need to leave a godly legacy. Let us leave something behind that they will take after. It's not that, yes, you serve God and your children are serving mammon. It's not that you know God and your children are turning against God. You serve the Lord with the whole of your life. By the time your children also come on board, they are supposed to do what? To serve better. Because what? You have left a legacy. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. In conclusion, brethren, a godly legacy is preferable to a material legacy. Therefore, believers should work hard to leave a godly legacy behind. We need to work hard and depend on God to help us to leave a, a godly legacy. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Brethren, let us pray to the Lord and say, Father, help me to live a holy heritage for my children. That each time my children remember me, Lord, they will give glory to your name, Daddy. 
There are some children, the moment they remember that, oh, that's what they begin to rain curse upon their parents. That that will not be your lot. That will not be my lot. It will not be our lot altogether. In the mighty name of Jesus, my Father, my Lord, help me to leave a great legacy, Lord, for my children, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord God, to leave a good legacy behind, Lord God, even at work, Lord, in the society, in the community, in the church of God, among brethren, in my family, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord God Almighty, after I might have left, Lord, that the Lord God, your name will still be glorified, Lord, with the legacy that I will leave behind, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We give glory to your name. For this time, for this hour, let your name be adorned, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we look up unto you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, to live good heritage, Lord, for our children, Lord, for our children, children, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That each time, Lord God, they remember us, Lord God, all glory, all honor, adoration will be unto you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father, even the names that you have given to us, Lord, you will help us to protect it, Lord. The names that our parents have protected, Lord God, and they have passed down to us, Lord, we will not soil the name, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Our children will not soil our names in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we will not soil the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give glory to your name. Be thou exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brethren, you are all welcome once again in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, we meet at the same time for Sunday school. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Thank you.